Okay, hi everyone. Uh, thanks for watching today. Today I'm going to be talking about PySynd, a comprehensive Python package for robust sparse system identification. Uh, and uh, basically, uh, that we our group at University of Washington has this code PySynd that is a Python code that easily allows you to use this uh, Cind method um, for whatever data you're using, whether you have noise or you're trying to discover. Uh, ODEs or PDEs or whatever dynamical system you're looking at. Um, so I'm, I'm basically going to do a sort of overview, a uh, few slides about how the, the code works, and then I'm going to uh, dive into some uh, mini tutorials that I'll uh, assemble as a list of videos on YouTube. Uh, so that's the plan. Uh, this work is based on our uh, recent archive paper you can find here, and my uh, many co-authors have, have of course helped uh, and then uh, our uh, code can be found at this GitHub repo. Uh, so please, if you're interested, uh, check that out. Um, but let's, let's dive in. So um, many of you have seen either me or Steve explain this before on our YouTube channels. Um, but uh, Cindy, or the sparse identification of nonlinear dynamics, uh, is a data-driven system identification method. So uh, you hand this algorithm a bunch of data, and Cindy will give you back a set of dynamical equations that describe how that data evolves in time. And uh, the canonical system we usually use to, to show this is uh, the Lorenz system here. So it evolves according to these underlying governing equations. Uh, but let's imagine you just have some simulation or experimental data. Um, you, w we can imagine for a second that we don't know the underlying equations, even though this is the, the Lorenz system. And then what we just imagine is we take some data, i.e. we take some measurements of x, y, and z, uh, and then we assemble that data into a data matrix. Uh, and that data matrix is this x dot here. So we've taken the data measurements of x, y, and z from the Lorenz system, differentiated them to get x dot, y dot, z dot, and uh, put that into a bi big data matrix, uh, big x dot. So, um, so we, we put our data on the left-hand side of an equation, and then on the right-hand side of an equation, we put this uh, theta matrix here, which is just a list of candidate library terms that could be on the right-hand side. And then that last matrix is just a coefficient matrix that chooses how strong are each of those terms in that candidate library. Uh, and I want to emphasize here, so, so this candidate library is up to fifth-order polynomials in x, y, and z. Uh, but you can put whatever nonlinear or linear functions that you want into this candidate library. Basically, you're building a huge number of possible models that could describe how your data evolves in time. And then you're performing sparse regression uh, to figure out which model best uh, fits the data. And um, what that looks like is you solve this optimization problem I've just put up, where you're, you're asking uh, to minimize the difference between the left-hand side and right-hand side of the equations. So you're, you're trying to fit the data. Uh, but at the same time, you add what's called a sparsity prior, that, that lambda r of c. And um, that, that basically is a uh, sparsity prior that tries to zero out as many of the coefficients in that last coefficient matrix on, uh, on the end there. And um, this, this is really useful. This is why it's sparse regression and not just regular regression. Uh, and, and basically, zeroing out as many of those coefficients as possible is useful because you get parsimonious sparse models, and this tends to avoid overfitting to, to noisy data. Uh, so that's, that's what you do. You solve an optimization problem asking for a sparse set of coefficients that gives you the best model describing how your dynamics evolve in time. So that's, that's Cindy. Um, how do we actually decompose Cindy into the PyCindy code? Uh, well, it's, it's pretty simple. We, we take that equation I showed on the last slide. Uh, we take x dot, so the left-hand side term, and we, we basically all we need to do is uh, take the measurements of x, y, and z from the Lorenz system, for instance, uh, and then we need a way to differentiate that data to get this data matrix x dot. Um, so we have a, a number of differentiators um, to build this uh, left-hand side term. Uh, then we need a, a way to generate uh, useful candidate libraries of terms of nonlinear functions. Um, so we have a, a form feature library to, to generate candidate library terms. 
And then the last thing we have is in order to determine the coefficients of those candidate terms in that, in that last matrix, uh, we need to solve that sparse regression optimization problem that I showed on the previous slide. And in order to do that, we have a number of sparse regression optimizers uh, which vary in how they solve the problem and also which uh, sparse regularizer is used, uh, whether it be the L0 norm or the L1 norm or, or what have you. Um, so it's, it's broken down into these three sub-modules and um, I'll sort of describe a little bit of how uh, the PyCine code uh, further uh, breaks down into classes within these modules. So that's, that's the basic decomposition in the code. Uh, you might have, uh, so you may have seen the Cindy method many times and you might still have some questions about how do you actually use this method effectively? Um, so I wanna bring up some questions that often come up or uh, that may sort of resonate with you. So how do you actually choose the hyperparameters in these algorithms like lambda? So lambda was the term controlling how, uh, how strong the regularizer is in, in the optimization problem. So how do you actually pick the value of that, uh, of that lambda uh, to, get, to get a good model? Uh, I'm gonna talk about how we can make this method robust in the presence of very noisy data. Um, so uh, it turns out that some, uh, th there are some variants of Cindy that actually work much better when the data is very noisy, and uh, I'll, I'll be uh, describing some of those methods in the, in the coming tutorials. So uh, the, the Cindy method I've shown you is actually only works for systems of ordinary differential equations, or ODEs. Uh, but it turns out there are other dynamical systems such as uh, implicit ODEs and partial differential equations, and you might want to discover those from a set of data. Uh, and it turns out Cindy has extensions to, uh, to solve these as well, and I'll be giving some simple examples in the PyCindy code of how we do this. Uh, I should mention we, we can solve up to uh, fully three-dimensional in-space uh, PDEs, uh, so that's, that's really nice. Uh, then you, th another question that comes up is how to actually choose what regularizer to use in the optimization. And then once you've chosen that regularizer, uh, say you want to use the L1 norm, how do you then best solve that optimization problem? So there, there are a number of different sparse regression algorithms that allow you to solve the optimization. And so how do you actually choose which one you want to use based on uh, the characteristics in your data? And then lastly, I'm going to talk about how you can build tailored candidate libraries. Uh, so one thing you may have noticed on the previous slide is that you can put any function you want into your candidate library. Uh, and so if you start adding a lot of functions, uh, this library can get combinatorically large. Uh, so we, we really would like to be able to um, make candidate, these, these feature libraries or candidate libraries, we want to be able to tailor them really precisely uh, to only include the types of terms we would expect to show up in the, in the dynamical system. Um, and I'll, I'll show some, some uh, sort of advanced functionality uh, that lets you build very general or very tailored candidate libraries in the PyCindy code. And then uh, I just wanted to show this last flowchart here about how to navigate some of the advanced features in PyCindy. And uh, what I'm gonna show is basically uh, starting from whatever experimental or simulation data you have, how you can make a series of decisions to figure out what uh, functionality in the PyCindy code is right for your data. Um, so one of the first things you might ask is, uh, uh, are my dynamics, do I expect my dynamics to follow a system of implicit ODEs? Uh, if that's the case, you have a little option. You have to use the Cindy Pi library and associated Cindy Pi optimizer. Uh, this is because this is the only form of, uh, the only Cindy variant that allows you to identify implicit differential equations. Uh, so that's, that's an easy choice. And then the other major decision you might have is uh, if your data includes a set of um, control input signals. And if that's the case, you might, you might want a separate control input library. Um, but uh, if not, we can move on. So, so the two major questions to first ask is, okay, I have some data. Uh, do I expect a system of implicit ODEs, and does my data include control inputs or not? So you, you start there, and then uh, we can keep going here. So now we ask, okay, uh, does my data have spatial dependence? Uh, if it does, then uh, the dynamical system I'm looking for is a partial differential equation, 
and therefore I should use the PDE library class in the PyCindy code. Uh, I know this is a lot of jargon and a lot of specific PyCindy classes, uh, but I'll be going over these different classes in the following tutorials, so uh, please hang on for me. Uh, so, so we ask, does the data have spatial dependence? And then uh, the other major question is, does the data have substantial noise? And there are a number of Cindy variants that uh, really help the robustness of this method against noisy data. Uh, so I've mentioned a few here. Uh, so using more advanced differentiation methods, uh, we have ensemble and library ensemble methods, and uh, a weak formulation of Cindy. Uh, all these things improve robustness to noise, and I'll be describing them in more detail in, in the coming uh, videos. Um, so, uh, and, then, and then you might want uh, different libraries for uh, different terms, and I'll, I'll talk about this generalized library uh, at, at the very end of these videos, uh, because it's, it's a bit of an advanced method. And then uh, last thing is, uh, that we're asking is, do, are we building in any physical priors with equality or inequality constraints on our model? Um, if we're not building any um, physical priors in, we can just use any Cindy optimizer that we want. And uh, otherwise, you can sort of uh, follow this more particular chain. Uh, so if you're looking for specific energy-preserving quadratic models, you can use this trapping SR3 optimizer. I've talked about trapping Cindy in another one of my videos. Uh, but otherwise, you can just use the constrained SR3 optimizer, which allows for any general equality or inequality constraint that you want on the dynamics. Uh, and this is really nice for solving problems where uh, you want to build in some physical priors to the model. So uh, we've taken you from your experimental or simulation data all the way to actually fitting a Cindy model, telling you about the sorts of decisions you would use to uh, decide what advanced functionality to use. And the primary questions to ask were, are you fitting an implicit system of ODEs? Is your data, does your data include control inputs? Does the data have spatial dependence? Does the data have substantial noise? And are you building in any physical priors with equality or inequality constraints? And with those questions, you can sort of navigate all the advanced functionality that we have in PyCindy and really provide a robust system identification method for your data. Uh, so that's, that's it for this video. And uh, the following ones will start with the PyCindy code and examine some of the uh, questions that I brought up on the previous slide. So thank you very much for listening.